Well, Occupy Wall Street protesters claim to be representing the 99% fighting the greed of the 1%. But who are the 1%? According to a report by the Center for Responsive Politics, 57 members of Congress are among America's elite when it comes to personal wealth, and a total of 249 representatives are millionaires. Meanwhile, Occupy sympathizer, liberal filmmaker Michael Moore, he's got a luxurious vacation home in an exclusive lakefront neighborhood in Michigan's, uh, it's worth about $2 million, in addition to a posh primary residence in New York. So do the protesters maybe have a gripe with the wrong people. Joining me now is CEO of Euro Pacific Capital, Peter Schiff. Peter, welcome. Thanks, Greg. Good to have you here. Thank you. I wanted to uh, tell everybody, Peter, that uh, we contacted Michael Moore's staff several times and we asked him to come on the show. Uh, we never got an answer. Well, if he so. knew I was going to be on, there's no way he would come. <laughs> I'm not sure he wants to answer some of these questions. And I want to be very clear. I don't begrudge Michael Moore having nice homes. I don't begrudge him making the millions and millions that he's made from his films, you know. But I do begrudge that he's a hypocrite. He is a capitalist. He makes things and gets profit from them and keeps enough of the profit to be a very wealthy man. Well, he's actually a better capitalist. He understands his market. His market is this socialist propaganda, and he knows who he's selling it to. So he has to pretend that he's just as poor as the people who are seeing his movies, but of course he's not. And I think what really is crazy is when he says that, you know, when he sold uh, Roger and me originally for $3 million, he claimed that he went to an accountant and said, don't take any deductions. I want to pay as much as possible. Uh, I mean, nobody yeah. goes to an accountant to pay more. You can do that without an accountant. And then he said he doesn't believe in making money off of money, that he's not a bad person because he doesn't invest his money. So he doesn't want businesses to have access to capital. Does he not understand where jobs come from, where economic growth comes from? He thinks that just earning money and then burying it in a hole in the ground makes you a good person? Well, he didn't bury it in a hole. He put it in some things that went well above the hole well, yeah, no, but, on but, the, uh, but, the shores of Lake Michigan. But he, would, but he also bought a lot of stocks. He invested in a lot of companies, and he pretended he wasn't doing it. But that's not a bad thing. We need savings. We need investment. That's what grows the economy. I, I, you know, I want to watch this little sound clip. This is Michael Moore at Occupy Wall Street talking to some of the protesters. I want to see the people responsible for destroying the lives of millions of people. I want to see the people responsible for destroying the lives of millions of people. In handcuffs. In handcuffs. Yeah, you know, I, I find it comical, and one, not that he's saying it because, I mean, he gets away with it, but there are people who are so duped that they honestly believe that he is kind of their, their leader. And I want to say, I tell you what, Michael, release your tax returns, and let's see if you paid as much as you legally could and you didn't take any deductions. I guess if you make your money making documentaries, it's okay, but if you do anything else, you know, we, we ought to be, you know, going after Congress. And you're talking about all the, the millionaires that are in Congress, and, of course, what bothers me is I want people businessmen to make millions in the private sector and bring that experience and knowledge to Washington because they understand how the economy works how business works and more importantly they understand how government taxes and regulations impedes economic growth and destroy jobs the problem I have is when people go to Congress and make their millions while they're still there and then they leave and they make millions more peddling influence with their former colleagues that's the problem you mean that actually happens Peter <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked shocked that it does we have a, another little clip that I want you to uh, react to. This is Nancy Pelosi talking about uh, everybody paying a fair share. The most endearing American value, fairness, is about everyone paying their fair share. We all have a responsibility. The very idea uh, that uh, the disparity in income and the disparity of equity and ownership in our country has grown so great. Uh, I listened to Ronald Reagan when he talked about how unfair it was for a bus driver to be paying uh, at the same rate as a millionaire. All right, according to congressional records, Nancy Pelosi is worth over $35 million. If she believes that she's not paying enough, 
can't she write a check to the government and just say, you know, this is way too much for me to be holding on to. Let me let go of about uh, 34.9 million of these dollars, and uh, that way I'll be doing a fair share. Well, of course, but I mean, a a fairness isn't about making sure that the rich pay more. You know, at one time in this country, there was no income taxes at all. It didn't even start until 1913. So before that, the rich didn't pay any income taxes, but neither did the middle class. And the economy grew a lot faster because it's the money that the rich don't send to Washington. That's where the jobs come from. That's where the prosperity comes from. Having people send more money to Washington is just going to drown the economy with government and regulation, and it's going to achieve the exact opposite of what these protesters are, are trying to achieve uh, when they're in wa- Occupy Wall Street. The most important thing we can do right now is those of us in leadership letting people know that uh, we understand their struggles, that we are on their side, and that we want to set up a system in which hard work, responsibility, doing what you're supposed to do, is rewarded. Do you think that this is a wonderful group of people who just have some honest grievances, or is it a mob out of control? Well, I think the majority of them are socialists, and i got to give Obama just an F on principle for what he just said. He said that we have to create a system that rewards hard work. We don't have to create anything. It was created by the Founding Fathers hundreds of years ago. He's destroying that system. Capitalism is what rewards hard work. He wants something different. He wants socialism, and I think that's what a lot of the people who are occupying Wall Street want. I think if the president is getting advised to distance himself from that, that's good advice, but I think in his heart. He wants to join them because that's what he believes in and what he just said proves it. Newt Gingrich, give him a grade. Well, you know, I think having taken $1.8 million from Freddie Mac is a lot more than a little baggage, especially since he said that in the debate, and I would agree with that, that guys like Chris Dard and Bonnie Frank should be in jail. Well, the problem is maybe uh, Newt should be sharing that cell. I mean, he's claiming that he was paid all that money as a historian. I mean, I don't think that they needed a history lesson, and if they did, they could get it a lot cheaper than $1.8 million. Then he claimed he was giving them advice on the mortgage market of the house. I don't believe that for a second. He was doing one thing. He was selling his influence. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were having problems. A lot of Republicans were starting to bring some heat on them to try to put an end to what they were doing, and so they brought on Newt Gingrich to, to, def- to defray that, and so they can keep on doing what they were doing to help blow up the housing market. They were making a lot of money, ultimately setting the stage for a collapse and all the bailouts, and I don't see how Newt Gingrich can criticize that if he was an integral part of it.